Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Kay Kim here with the Traders Club. Welcome to the market update. Uh, I wanted to start with this. Uh, I am running a uh, 2019 December promo. It's the same promo that I've ran for the Thanksgiving weekend, right? Uh, same rate. So um, as you guys know, if you guys have been following me for a while, I only run promotion pro usually about once a year. So. I think this is first time that I'm doing this uh, for the entire month of um, December until the uh, last or until the weekend, end of the weekend uh, after the New Year's. The fifth is Sunday, so fifth um, January fifth. So you have plenty of time to think about it. Um, after this, there will be no promotion until end of next year, which is end of 2020, because usually I run one or two promotions usually at the end of the year. So this will be the last promotion that I'm going to be running. Um, so I'll be running it. I'll be talking about it throughout this month. Um, I'll try to write more articles and tweet more things. And as the market is breaking out, let's kind of recap things here. Um, you know, a few things we've been talking about. Um, let's kind of go with I think this was, yeah, this is November. Yeah, this was November 19, this is November 7. So this was first time, or when I first came to realization that we're seeing a breakout uh, in the major indices, uh, including the uh, financial sector, we talked about that. So this was, this was back in again, early November, right? So you can see that that's a level. And now I'm drawing resistance this way because that's what we recently came down. We're respecting that. So this is how we saw that this is breaking out of that recently. We're going to go back to it. We pull back, retesting that level and uh, bouncing. Again, we'll go back to it. This is semiconductor. Semiconductor there. You see the breakout. Q's. That was that. That's the diamond. Dow Jones, and this is S&P, right? So a lot of times, you know, um, when you see market is breaking out like this, I think a lot of times, especially people who hasn't been long in this market, right? They have not been long. So it is kind of scary to all of a sudden, you missed out this entirety of 25% wrong. I mean, that's probably more if we measure it from the December lows. You know, after missing out entirety of this 34% run, right? 34% run on the S&P. And, and you know what I mean? And, and and now they were breaking out, going full on bullish after it cleared that level, it's, it's difficult. I don't think anybody should invest that way. Best time would have been obviously here, right? And I think in the summertime, market gave us uh, many opportunities to accumulate in these pullbacks right there, which we've been talking about. I was navigating you guys through those times where these pullbacks was gonna give us the opportunity, right? I think then it would be much, much better to maybe add a little bit more on this pullback, something like that. But let's say you missed out this 33% run, just downright, you just didn't do anything. And then going full on bullish at the all time highs after making 33% run since the, you know, December of 2018, it's not prudent, I say. Um, so. And so this was, I, I wrote this on November 19th, 2019. And again, you can go back, you can go to twotradersclub.com and go to market analysis. You can find all this analysis and kind of read it again. I think this is a little bit more technical. You can go ahead and read all of that. Um, there's a good news, not a bad news. Um, so, cause I, I think a lot of people are talking about that this market is extended, right? It's extended and this funny thing that you hear from the member or from the people or from the traders that is extended, those are the same people who's been saying that they wouldn't bet on long side here or here or here or here or here. So when the when the market is not extended, they won't dare to buy that. But when the market is now 
yes, it is quote unquote extended. Now there's now there that well, this is not a level where you start going long. Well, you didn't go long here anyway. You see what I'm saying? Like why? What? Like you you have you you shouldn't be you didn't shouldn't be saying anything. <laughs> you didn't want to go long when we when we seeing a pullback when the market wasn't extended at all, especially when we're down here. Why say market is extended up here? So, and I go through sometimes on Twitter feeds and things like that. Not on my feed, but just go through um, what's going on in the Twitter world and FinTwit as an entertainment, BS entertainment purposes, just for a laugh. And then, you know, I start, peeps, peop, I start hearing people talking about how this market is overbought or extended. And that's kind of what I was talking about. That's exactly what happened in 2016, right? We saw a breakout. Right after about a year and a half of consolidation. Funny thing is, we actually also saw about a year and a half. Right, that's about a year and a half. Here, let's extend it this. So we get that. That's about a year and a half. We finally broke out here, and here is net interesting. We finally broke out here. Right, about a year and a half. These are 15% corrections in 2016 and 15. This is 20% corrections, but very very similar sentiment. Just the way market you know, got into uh, consolidation, congestion, or sideways, or pause, or resting pattern, whatever it is. We talked about it. I've been harping on it for the last, I don't know, several weeks of videos where we see a more bullish move, you see a consolidation before it runs again, right? That's what we call an uptrend. We see corrections along the way, but that's how primary term uptrend works. Keywords, primary, right? You gotta understand what primary, intermediate and minor term. So you can see how this is again, this is I'm just kind of reiterating. This is how my oscillator, you can see that how it's spiking it up, spiking up, right? So now I think a lot of people are saying that well the market is extended. And it was extended um, same thing in late 2016. Late 2016. And you can see how market consolidated a little bit for, I don't know, this must be a month or so, two months. And then market continued to march higher. What these ups and downs? I think these are like, what, 5 6% corrections along the way. And how many people are saying that market was very, very extended up here? And if you guys remember, if you guys have been following me since 2017, I rolled this all the way up, right? And I intend to do the same thing in 2020. We're probably not going to see something exactly the same way, the way the market has moved like this in 2017, but we're probably going to see something similar. Right? Market is probably going to market is not going to repeat. It's probably going to rhyme. It's going to do something that is going to be different than 2017. But over a perspective, as far as a primary term trend is concerned, we're going to see something similar. How the trend works, right? We're going to have you know, we're going to have its corrections along the way, but um, we're going to see something similar to 2017, where I believe that 2020, we're going to have another good year, again, with corrections along the way, right? So if you just look at this chart here again, um, that was not the level that you start closing out all of your positions if you're a long-term investor, right? Even if you're a position trader like, like, like myself, I'm a position trader and an active investor. That's not a level. Maybe you can trim it a little bit because we can see market really didn't go much for a couple months or something like that. We grinded high a little bit, but looking at the more overall perspective, we kind of move sideways. Sideways, sideways or grinding higher. And that's kind of what, we, what we've been seeing in the market. You can see where we retested that level here, 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 and we're making move another move higher. You know, sometimes people ask questions like, well, I'm, they're not, you guys are not asking me, but like on Twitter, like why is the market move higher? What, you know, things like that. Like, what is the purpose? What is, what is the reason behind it? You know, well, that's not a good news or that's that's a bad news. Like, at the end of the day, do you really care why? Do you really, really care why it moves higher? Seriously? 
You know what I mean? Like sometimes, like I'm talking about more like a day, day to day to day, day to day uh, narrative. Sometimes the market just move higher just because it wants to. Because the market people are feeling like they're gonna buy. It. You know what I mean? Like there sometimes there's no reason. Like every single day, people ask the same stupid question. Like why is it going higher today? Why does that matter? You know what I mean? There's no sometimes there's no narrative. There's sometimes no reason. People just felt like buying it because we're an uptrend. Because people because stocks are breaking out. People don't want to miss out. So people just start buying it. That's why it's higher. Not because there's some kind of narrative or because Trump tweeted something or something like that. There's no way of knowing why. On a daily basis, you know, each day, you know, because you watch like these mainstream media sources like CNBC or something like that. And they would always say something like, oh, there's optimism with trade talk because of the market is down. Oh, there's a pessimism with trade talk because that's why market is down or market is up or down, whatever, right? They always trying to like, you know, push certain narrative into reason of why the market is up or down. They don't know. They're just making making things up. On a day-to-day -day basis, nobody knows. Sometimes market is just higher because people felt like buying. People felt like buying because stocks are breaking out. Stocks are breaking out. So you can see spiders at new all-time high. I mean, think about just back in, you know, um, where was this? December. I mean, how did you, what did you feel? Like, look at, just look at this chart. And let's just, just I want you to like feel this. What do you, what do you feel like doing at 234 on spider? Would you go long there? What did it, what, when you look at this chart, what does it look like? Look at all these moving averages, you know, they're rolling over now. Look at now. What do you, what do you feel? It is important because your feelings, your emotions is going to be a hindrance, right? Because you're scared to buy down here because the market looked bearish. Well, you're scared to buy it up here because now market looks extended. So now you don't do anything, right? So, um, I have to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. Um, bullish in the minor term, bullish in the intermediate, bullish in primary term. We just kind of bounce here. We've got these gaps, very, very strong looking gaps. We've been talking about, you know, that island reversal too. Um, I was um, I was tweeting out that, uh, where is the chart? Let me bring that chart here. Um, so this was a chart that I share on my Twitter feed yesterday right yesterday so i call this a half island reversal because you see this gap down right you know what's funny when we see a gap down like that like when we saw the gap down like it's like like people are freaking out oh my god that's a mother of all traps you know oh my god the bulls are gonna die oh my god like people are always saying stupid things on twitter and that's why it's funny to go there for a little bit of laugh and some entertainment but it's like a Jerry Springer of stocks, right? So, you see the gap down, and then we gapped up. It, for this to be a full-on island bottom reversal, like it will need it to gap here. Somewhere here, about 2, 3, 12, 3, 11, 50 or something like that. So this entirety of it will be, an, like, will be a gap, right? Gap down, gap up. But we gapped halfway. We gapped halfway. So I called it a half island bottom. This becoming an island. This, nonetheless, there is reverse. There is gap. There's a down gap. There's an up gap. There's space in between. That's why this is an island, right? And we held that level and we talked about we need to get above about 312, 15 or 313 ish level for this to get to new all time highs. And this is today. And it just gaps right up. But the funny thing about it is yesterday, the way we closed, you can see this was, I, I think I, when did I screen this? Midday. So this was a midday. And you can see from today's screen, I screened this earlier today. You can see that towards the end of the day, it got back up. The dips were bought and we were just at this level. So there was a good chance that this was gonna just thrust higher, but you know what I mean, like gap up higher. That's why I call jumping over the fence. A lot of times, 
you know, the stocks don't want to deal with the resistance because a lot of times it's going to deal with that. There's going to be head fakes, shenanigans up here before it breaks out. Sometimes it just gaps right up and don't even deal with the resistance. So now we can call this as island bottom reversal. We can call that island breakaway gap. And this is going to be a continuation gap. And looks like it's looking pretty strong there. You see all these, I, I annotated with this box, this blue box. These are all gaps. All these gaps are going to provide support. And now you can see these three, we got two gaps. You got gap here and this is island. Let's make that green. So we know that next time, next Friday, you know. So any kind of pullback you know, any fizzling action next week, these support levels going to act as, or these, you know, gap levels are going to act as support. That's why gaps are very, very important. And that's why I track gaps because they do act as pretty strong support. For bears to really, really bring it down it would be something similar to how bulls did it. You know, something similar to what how bulls did it. We see a gap down. You know how bulls gapped it right back up, made it into an island bottom. What the bears, if bears really want to bring it down and maybe bring it down and gap it down here and make that into an island top, right? But it's more rare because we're an uptrend. It's more rare to see that because even, you know, even when there was a gap here, you see how it came down, we fizzled, and then finally did come down and there are other, other gaps here. And that gap got filled, acted support, and got right back up. So when you're in an uptrend, you usually do not see too many island tops. You'll see more island bottoms because we're an uptrend. If we were a downtrend, you're bound to see more island tops versus island bottoms. Because we're an uptrend, you're going to see more island bottoms. You know, we've seen island bottoms before. Like there's island bottom here. You know, there's a little tiny island bottom there. This is technically island. If you go to 65 minutes, that's technically island bottom right there. So there's a gap down here, gap up there, you know. Mm, I don't see. This was technically island bottom also because there's a gap down there. There's gap up there. Initially came down, but you can see that area did act as support, you know. And as some people say the gap should always get filled. No, it doesn't. It doesn't always doesn't need to always get filled because this gap never got hasn't gotten filled. This is not going to get filled. The I don't think these any of these gaps gaps going to get filled this year. Probably not even next year. Maybe this gap I could see this gap getting filled. Possibly even retest of that gap. But this big gap is not going to get filled. This gap is not going to get filled. And we got gaps from here. It's probably not going to not ever going to get filled for years. This gap right here is not going to get filled. I know some of you watching thinking the crash is going to come. They're like, hey, they're going to get filled, man. They're going to get filled in two months. It's going to get filled in two months, man. You don't know, K. This thing is going to go down, man. It's going to go to 200K, right? And like people saying that it's like, even let's see if it actually does happen, you know? Like, you're probably not gonna, you're probably already got wiped out trying to short this market. <laughs> so if we, that's the thing about shorting the market is it's extremely difficult to like call the top in a precise manner where it's gonna, it's gonna be profitable for you, especially you're looking for like big short, right? You're looking for the big, big short where you know, like, you know, bank. You're looking for like the market to tank like 50% and you want to write it down. It is most difficult and that endeavor to try to profit from it. There's, you know, people win jackpots, you know, people do win jackpots. Why don't you go to that person who won jackpot and be like, can you teach me how you can win jackpot like you did? Like, no. Sometimes people do somehow get it, uh, but very, very rare. So betting on a rare side of probability is going to be a very, very difficult endeavor. And I think the trap is most people want to make money quick. 
And that's not how you're going to truly accumulate wealth. Wealth is accumulated over time. And most people don't understand that. They want to make money quick. This is the reason why most retail traders are bears or like to short. Because they say, well, why wait for two months when this down move can happen in a week? Their logic is that messed up. Anyway, let's go to Q's here. And I, I want to continue to give benefit of doubt to the buyers. And you know that my target is 320 by end of this year. And I've had that target pretty much all throughout this year. But I think there's a chance that if the market does continue higher, 330 maybe, 325. But I think this is a good level to, you know, um, put it as a target towards the end of this year. But uh, sometime next year, first couple of months or so, I think 340 is also. But um, next year will be, I think, good year. We're probably going to see... A pretty big move you know that was a breakout level there you can even do that breakout breakout all right let's go to cues same story here same looking chart similar looking chart let's turn it into per or blue so prior I tweet all this out I've been tweeting it out this week that's where we're holding there um, is it going to be a double top? We don't know. You know what I mean? Like we get up, pull back, get up, pull back. I don't, you see what I mean? Like trying to guess that is just going to be a sucker's game. Trying to guess it. Is it going to be double top? You're just playing a casino now. Like, oh, it's going to be double top. So I'm going to short that. You're always playing that 50-50 guess all the time. But you know what? Most people play that guessing game, uh, usually end up getting chopped to death. So same analysis applies here. I want to continue to give benefit of doubt to the buyers. Are we extended, quote unquote extended? Yes, we are. But I, as I've just shown you on my article that we could continue to grind higher. And we talked about that, I think, last week's video that I think everybody's looking for a sizable dip, sizable, significant dip, something like, you know, something similar to this, like 8%, 7%, right? Okay, my charting software just kind of went, <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> my charting software just kind of went frozen, like 7%, right? Everybody's looking for 7%. The funny thing about it is how people, when, when we actually have 7% declines here and here and here, people get scared to buy that. But now they're like saying, okay, the market is finally breaking out, right? Finally breaking out. We're making new all-time highs. And now that everybody knows the market is bullish, stocks are breaking out, the indices are breaking out, creating, you know, printing new all-time highs almost every day. So now they want to buy. Now they want to see the market to see a steep decline, like 7%. They said, now, okay, if I see 7% decline on the market, now I want to buy the dip. And I said that last week, last couple of weeks, market is probably not going to give it to you now. So you had, you had your chances here and here. Now, this is what? How much was that? Like 2.4%. And then we just bounced right back up. And we're actually bouncing at a very, very obvious level. You know, very, very obvious. Do you guys remember? I mean, if you guys have been following me for a while, I talked about this before. Market is going to either bounce early or late. Right, never bounces at like ideal level where everybody's looking for it to come and retest. I think the other day I was like, somebody tweeted out on Twitter that CNBC chart master was talking about like a couple of days ago when this thing gapped down, that there, this thing is likely come down 300 or something like that. And that same chart master said last time, I think when this was like here, that this was gonna come down to here. Remember 259, I tweeted out before back in March, that this is gonna come down to about 261 to go higher. And then when the market was up here somewhere, the chart master, the CNBC chart master said, oh, it's gonna come down, retest the, the December lows. Well, that never happened. Now, they're saying it's gonna come down to here. See, all these levels, these obvious levels that everybody's looking at and everybody's looking for it to pull back, market is not gonna give you, don't you understand? Market is not going to give you. That's why you got to stop listening to these chart masters. 
All right, so let's go to Q's. Yeah, same story there. Let's go to Diamond. Same story here. It's multi year, you know, consolidation. Look at that. Multi year consolidation resistance. We broke out, retest, getting back up there. And you know, I know some of you might say, okay, that looks like a mother of all trap, trapping all the bulls before this thing tankage, K. Okay. okay, let's not do that. Because how many times that worked out? You know, how many times that worked out? I, I, I gave you a challenge. You guys remember I gave you a challenge? I think like last week or a couple weeks ago or several weeks ago, maybe this whole month or last year, I don't know, last month. Go back to your charts, and when there was 20% decline, it must have to have a 20% decline first from the peak, and then when it goes to make new all-time high, has there ever been a event where that ended up becoming a market crash top or recession? Ever. Never. There has never been. And you say... Well, it's going to happen this time, Kay. Now you're guessing, you see. Now, now you're playing the 50-50 guessing game. But it's not really even 50-50. Because, you know, I'm sure you've been playing that guessing game, 50-50 guessing game. You're probably wrong almost every single time on every trade. Like, I don't even have to look at your account. I'm pretty sure if you've been playing that guessing game, trying to guess the top, you're probably wrong 9 out of 10 times. Right? I don't even have to look at your account. I, I already know because I've tried that game many, many, many years ago, and that game doesn't work. Russell 2000, and I talked about how, you know, what is in the catalyst of this market to continue to prop higher? Well, Russell and the banks are going to play catch up. Banks are already caught up. You can see banks is actually outperforming. You can see how banks and Russell, they're both outperforming the S&P today, especially banks really, really thriving today. Banks 25% year today, whereas Spider 24%. I remember there's time where the banks were lagging a lot, and a lot of people are saying because of that, well, it's gonna drag everything else down. Well, I've been saying that it's gonna actually prop up everything. Russell 2000 trying hard here is a 20% year today. I'm pretty, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna get to new all time highs before this year ends. Not if not before this year ends, probably early next year. And that's going to get us to pretty close to the S&P, I think. And so they're going to start to play a catch up there. And Russell 2000, we're finally breaking above this important, important pivotal area there. We're making new highs. Why is that important? For the first time since, since late 2018, we have cultivation of higher high after about all year long consolidation that's going to be pretty bullish signal looking at things more of an intermediate term i'm not saying it's going to be straight up from here we may see some up and down shenanigan but i think we might see some swift move to the ups on the russell 2000 let's go to the banks look at the banks this is what happened to banks. This was an important pivotal area right here. For the first time since 2018, we have cultivated what? Higher high. We're no longer in a downtrend. And I've been actually talking about this throughout this year that, uh, you know, bank sector is the only sector from the indices, from the tickers that we watch every week, right? That we're in a technically in an intermediate term downtrend. Remember that? We've been talking about that. The lower highs and lower lows and when we actually when the buyers when the bulls reclaim this level of 29 for the first time since 2018 we have cultivation of higher high higher low looks all, almost like this mega inverted head and shoulder formation right all it is all inverted head and shoulder shoulder is we're seeing a reversal in a price action where we were cultivating lower low, now that lower low becomes the higher low, and that lower high becomes high before the higher high. You see, 
So you see how sentiment is changing or changed from bearish sentiment to bullish sentiment. So when you do your own analysis, you always want to do your analysis based on the data at hand, like I've just done right now. So we want to give benefit of doubt to the buyers instead of saying, well, the fundamentals are weak, okay, so this thing is going to go down. Well, I don't think that has ever worked, um, ever, never in history of mankind. I don't think anybody who actually traded that way ever made money. Let's go to semiconductor. Um, yeah, semiconductor, you can see pretty obvious level. You know, I'm actually surprised to see the markets are up after hitting the obvious level. I thought we we're going to see a little bit more, you know, market might do a little bit more tricky things. Maybe, maybe come slightly lower just so that market can kind of freak you out a little bit and then get right back up so that, you know, people be like, aha, there's a massive bull trap. It might still do that, but I'm actually kind of surprised that we're bouncing this at this obvious level. I think because it's been for so long that I think market has done good job of scaring a lot of investors and traders this year with this. And then we also saw that steep 20% decline, abrupt 20% decline. So I think Mark, people are still very much scared of what happened here and here and here. And these declines are fast. You can see how fast this thing came down, how fast this came down. And look at this one. So I think a lot of people are still scared. They're scared to go long because they don't know when we're going to see another shenanigan like this. I don't think we're going to see another move corrections like this again. I don't, not again, we're probably going to see it again, but not next year, not this month, not next. We're not going to see 20% for at least two years, two, three years. For seven, eight percent, mm, maybe eight percent, seven, eight percent sometime next year. But this month though, I don't, I don't, I think we're going to see these smaller declines, maybe four percent decline at most. Or we may just continue, you know, march higher. Even next year, we may see five to eight percent at most. But I don't believe we're not gonna we're gonna see anything more than ten percent next year throughout the year, throughout the whole year. Do you know that in 2017, I said we're probably not gonna. I actually, I, I gotta find. It. I I wrote an article or I did it on my market update video. I actually said I don't know if you guys remember that we're in two the entirety of 2017. You guys remember? Some of you guys remember entirety of 2017. We're not gonna see a correction more than five percent. You guys remember that? And I think this was what three percent. This was what like one point two percent. This was what one point nine percent. Even this was only. Um, 2.5. So, so I, I remember, I think it was a late 2016 or early 2017. I made a claim that in 2017, we're not going to see a correction s s deeper than 5%. And most five all year long. And you can see in 2017, we saw 2%, 3.5, 1.2, 2% decline, and just things shot up. I think in 2020, Hmm, five to seven, five to seven percent, five to eight, maybe, you know, um, I think that's what we're going to see, but we're not going to see more than anything more than that. I don't think we're going to see anything more than 8% corrections 2018 or 2020. I mean, maybe 10, maybe 10, but five to seven is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Five to 7% is all we're going to see. So as this thing goes, I think like 400 is even possible next year. You know, as this thing goes higher, we'll go 5%, 7%, you know, something like that. But I don't think we're going to see anything steeper than that. I don't think we're going to see like 10% or 15% or even 20% in 2020. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards to. And that's how I am positioned in the market. And, you know, um, and I'm intend to writing it all the way in 2020. So, um, so I am learning this entire month of um, December. Uh, you can learn more about it. I'm not going to get into it because I have two videos that I get into more details about this promo. Um, as you guys seen my um, performance there 
and uh, all the informations here I can see in my members per performance so you can feel free to go ahead and sign up through that by clicking here so um, anyway you guys have a wonderful weekend and good luck trading next week